Hello and welcome to yet another video about Sony CDP X7 ESD. Well, I just can't get enough of these, and <laughs> I bought another one. And yes, you guessed it, it's a fully working one, or at least that what was claimed. That um, sadly, as always, the faults with it. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but over there inside. Sorry about the squeaking lamp. There is a sticker there on the KSS 190 which says in the last row 551. I don't know whether this camera has focused enough or not. But that's what it says and we'll come to this. You see, needs a bit of a nudge to close the door. And the same with opening. But read the table of contents nicely. Now, it does so on CDRs. But you see, it has difficulties in reading that CDR, okay? So it reads CDs perfectly, but CDRs, even the ones with good reflectivity, it has difficulties. So uh, my next step was to, to find out uh, what on earth was wrong with it. And I found that the laser power was half of what it should have been. They're normally 100 microwatts, but this was about 50. Two possibilities. It's either on its last legs, or it had been set so low at the factory, at about half of what they normally are. So, um, so there we go. If you see over there, uh, the current, and this is uh, our 22 ohm resistor there, the current on it is 1.2 amps, so if we go to the calculator and enter 1225 and divide it by the 22 ohms, what we get is 55.58. As you remember, it was 55.1, so uh, it's actually 55.68. So it only has increased the current by half a, well, by, by half of a milliamp. So, what it means that this is used, you know, it's not even 10%. 10% would have been one milliamp, but this is half of that. So it's only 5% used in, what, 30 years of its service, or thereabouts. So obviously this is not a problem with the dead laser, it's a problem with laser that's just been set too low. So I'm going to crank it up to normal 100 milliwatts and I'm sure that it will work then on all the CDRs. It's just somebody said it's so low. I suppose at the time they were made there was no CDRs and it worked perfectly well on CDs and it still does. And it still does. Overall the unit is in uh, very good um, visual condition and technical. Obviously the, the belts will need to be replaced and I can see the the grease is a bit yellowish, so all that needs to be cleaned. Uh, but other than that, well, I'll, I'll of course, clean the micro switches or limit switches. The biggest problem, my concern is the wooden cheeks. You see, that's a bottom. The top is very nice, but the bottom they don't actually put um, um, any any finish. And you can see these are the two blemishes. So I don't know if I'm going to fix that or make new ones. I, I, the previous unit I had, the previous units I had, I actually made new from a local hardwood called Jara. But uh, the carpenter that um, did that for me has retired, so I don't know uh, how I'm going to go about that yet. But that's the biggest concern. Other than that, it is uh, it is all right. Not even a crackle, you see, this is a this, this is the variable pot which controls both the headphones and a variable output. There's of course single single-ended fixed output and variable and also uh, a balanced balanced output there on uh, on XLRs. Let me turn it down a bit. The other thing that it does the, the output uh, you can have either digital or analog and if we change it I have to wake up my oscilloscope. As you see, the the, the traces is always pretty good. It's a 
tiny amount of overshoot, uh, but it's, it's almost as square as you're gonna get. Uh, there was a bit of artifact there on it before, and I'm still going to take out that board and just see, you know, if any caps there got uh, bad or some connection uh, got um, broken. Uh, there was another little fault at the back, well, fault or fault. Um, well, I could actually, I suppose, even show it to you um, because that's something that one should sort of uh, look for. Uh, so let me let me lift it up. Maybe I'll just turn it off. It'll be safer. Uh, and you can have a look. I'll disconnect the probes. Copper shafts, but it's bloody heavy. So what was happening here, that those two capacitors, they are sort of mounted there on double-sided type, and obviously with time they were sort of dangling there. So, uh, so I've put them on some hot glue, but I will take the top board out as well, and um, I make sure that the uh, solder joints on which they, they were sort of hanging, that they're, they're still Okay, but as you see, it's um, very good condition. No work here being done by anybody, which is good. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll fix it up and I'll offer it for sale. Uh, last time I wasn't gonna sell, I was sort of keeping it and um, as a transport. And um, because the, the, the one even before that I sold for a thousand Australian dollars, but somebody approached me seeing my old ad at Stereonet Australia and says, oh, I suppose you don't have it anymore. I said, I do, but I want a lot of money. And I said, oh, I have to pay $2,000 now. And he said, yep, all right. And I was surprised to find out that it actually costs more than that now. So this is one of those players that has doubled in price in the last five years. You know, the first one went for 1000 the second one went for 2000 Australian dollars, which is probably, I don't know, uh, just over a thousand euros or American dollars, something like that. Uh, but, you know, that, who would have known? I mean, I, I didn't check and I thought uh, I'll put a price high in order to keep it and uh, the guy just snapped it up. Well, I suppose I've noticed now that the open close thing printing on the front panel is not really that pretty. It started to rub off. So that, I suppose, is a... Um, that's the blemish that I won't be able to, 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 to fix properly. Well, that's all, folks, and um, till the next one. Now, when, I, when I finish it, I might do another video showing that it all works properly, like a sales video. Okay, and till the next one. Bye-bye.